Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome back to another Timeless Starseed Transmission. I don't even want to start this without telling you the dream my husband literally just had. Like, I was lying on my bed reading Sir Gawain in the Green Knight, and I had just finished the last line when I heard this big smack, and my husband making all this noise from the other room. I get up, and he had fallen asleep on the couch, and when he woke up, he managed to knock the table over. <laughs> and he was all telling me about the weird dream he just had where he said it was kind of like reality blending into the dream and that he was asleep on the couch but in the dream you know he woke up and looked out the window and there was an eagle out there but the eagle was wearing a sombrero and he was like what the what the hell's going on right and then he looks a little closer and realizes that it's not actually an eagle it's just a dude uh, with eagle wings and then the eagle wings were actually just kind of like taped onto this guy's back and this dude with these taped on eagle wings was wearing a sombrero. Um, and my husband is Latino but he said the dude in the dream was just this weird like white dude, this hippie guy and the message he had for my husband was dude you gotta chill out. You gotta chill. That, that was the whole that was the whole message and he's like you can buy these wings for like $15 at Walmart <laughs> and and then he like one of his wings flew off and he was like whatever doesn't matter and he, I don't need these wings to fly anyway and he just kind of like floated away <laughs> and um I thought that was just hilarious because I can recognize that as the universe or really some angel coming through to my husband telling him that you know he needs to chill out because my husband do does kind of need to chill out he's been through a really stressful couple of years and right now he's learning to just relax and kind of take things as they come and my husband even though he's not particularly in to this kind of stuff, not not on a conscious level. He was like, you know, I think that was an angel. That wasn't like a dude with eagle wings. That was an angel. And I'm thinking like, yep, yeah, 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 it was. And that message of you got to chill out and take things less seriously is what I'm seeing here. And I had just happened to like, he woke up and then he left to go to work. And I come in here and turn on the camera and it was exactly 11.11 and everything was just syncing up. So yeah, the message, the overall main message is that we all need to relax. And I think we're going to be relaxed. And we're going to be taking things less seriously. Uh, I think including even our communication with our, you know, our Starseed family, our guides, uh, our galactic guides, all of it, because as I just experienced, you can have an angel come and talk to you and it could be in the form of a hilarious dream in which the angel is a hippie wearing eagle wings and a sombrero. So <laughs> that's kind of the backdrop of where we are at. And now I'd like to get in to your cards. So uh, the center of all of this is perfectly the Knight of Cups. This is all of us really learning to lead with our heart and to actually not be sure where we're going, but knowing that we're going in the right direction. You know, the Knight of Cups is following their heart, following their, like, kind of becoming a river, becoming a flow of water, the flow of water out of the cup, moving always in the right direction, always moving in kind of like only the right direction, um, but not actually being able to foresee where they are going. So, and that I think is not entirely comfortable for some of us because this card at the bottom, this is kind of our deep past. It's the Akashic position. This is the Seven of Swords. So this is, I've really kind of changed or maybe it's just like evolved. I'm seeing higher layers to the Seven of Swords. It's not just about deceit and lying and all of that. It is about your some kind of repressed inner emotion that has been kind of subjugated, getting ready to burst forth. And this energy can really help you blast through glass ceilings, okay? This is like somebody, it can be a little bit like an adult throwing a tantrum, which can be unpleasant. But, you know, if we don't let it get to that point, if you really can feel into what direction your soul wants you to go, then you don't need to get to the point of 
really being explosive and exploding and being kind of childish and irrational. You want to just kind of harness uh, and really notice what you truly, truly desire and where your emotions want you to go and where, uh, what, what you really want. And then if you can notice that and head towards it, you can do that without having to be like the seven of swords, you know, in the traditional tarot where it's some guy like stealing a bunch of swords and running off and he doesn't really know what he's doing. So you want to be, but we're moving past that kind of childish or irrational type of cage of the seven of swords. I think it, it can kind of feel like barbed wire around us and we have to blast through it or blast past it. Um, that was kind of the lower evolution of that. And now we're moving more into the Knight of Cups where we are really refining that and are feeling much more confident in following your heart, even when we don't know where it is leading us. And this is leading us to only good places because our spiritual journey at the top here, the Six of Wands. This particular Six of Wands, you can see it's it's a mirror image, right? We have the Caduceus, we have this being in their two halves. And this particular Six of Wands I really see as finding a lot of harmony and finding a lot of balance. And that is what is leading you to the victory or to the triumph. Because the Six of Wands is that, is like, can be that card of triumph. But here, the triumph comes not through asserting yourself, not through trying too hard, not through fighting your way to victory, but through just being in balance and really harmonizing different aspects of yourself. And that is really what this whole moment is that we're experiencing is all about it is like giving up the struggle of it, realizing that life doesn't need to be so hard. We really can just chill out and move into the flow down here. This is our healing. This is the thing we need to heal right now. And it is the seven of wands. <laughs> the seven of wands is that, you know, on a traditional tarot, somebody standing on top of a hill and feeling like they're having def to defend themselves. And it has been a long struggle to get there. And it is feeling like, oh, no matter how many moments I have of triumph, there's always more of a struggle, always more of a battle. So that is what we are healing. We no longer need to struggle so hard. We no longer need to be feeling like we need to be constantly doing and conquering. We can start to practice trusting that everything is unfolding perfectly and we can just go with the cosmic flow knowing that it is all working out exactly as it is supposed to be working out and I've been thinking a lot about this lately where in our human experiences we will struggle for exactly as long as we identify with struggling right we incarnated into all these lives on earth where we had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pain and suffering. Um, I know recently, you know, through August, I have been remembering past lives where I have been just repeatedly tortured to death, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm bringing those memories up because, you know, it is relevant for me to work through those kind of, you know, that, that kind of past life baggage. And I'm understanding why I chose to go through those lives. And so part of what we need to do right now is to understand that we chose to struggle and to suffer for quite a long time, but now we no longer need to identify with that. We can literally just look at the whole trope of suffering and struggling and go, that is no longer resonant for me. That's in the past. That is done. I don't need to learn through struggling and suffering anymore. I don't need to <laughs> have any more of those experiences. I can now just choose to be in the type of existence where I am in perfect flow and perfect uh, freedom and just pleasure where everything is just going to be, uh, you know, how we have always hoped it could be, but really never believed it could be. Not while we have been alive on earth, but so we're really, we need to let go of this idea that we need to struggle in order to be productive, this idea that we need to suffer in order to earn something, um, all of that, all of that. And yeah, okay, our energetic health. Six of Pentacles. That card of reciprocal giving and receiving of sometimes it's seen as charity, but this is understanding that when you give something to somebody or just give something out into the universe, you are going to get an equal return because the universe is always balancing balancing energy. It's just not necessarily gonna gonna come back 
from the person you gave it to or from the th like it's not going to come back necessarily like linearly in a mirrored way it'll come back in some other fashion for example you know maybe you're trying to start up a patreon for whatever project you're working on and you think um okay you know i am giving ten dollars a month uh to somebody else on patreon therefore you know they should give me ten dollars a month on patreon right well that's not necessarily how it's going to work but if you are giving ten dollars a month on patreon to somebody then somebody else is going to be giving you ten dollars on patreon you know that money is that energy you know that is kind of manifesting as crystallized power in the form of money it'll be circulating around and it's going to come back to you uh just not from the person you gave it to so i think that is what you're tuning into and you can we can really really tune into that um mentality whenever we are trying to make a decision i have been i have been practicing this and i go okay you know it is that horrible old cliche of you know do unto others as you would have them do unto you <laughs> kind of but thinking about it just more in terms of your energy when you are giving your energy out into the universe really thinking okay i don't need to worry about how that's going to come back to me because i know it's going to come back to me i can trust that it will come back to me so you don't need to worry so much about where you're spending your money and where you're spending your time if you are constantly tuning into the flow of your your heart space and where your heart where your intuition is calling you if you're making your decisions from that space then you know that the energy will will return to you and that is what is going to help you come out of the constant struggle because <laughs> uh, once you start experiencing it just a little bit right it, you know at the first you might have to you can go on trust or if you don't want to go on trust you can just just tell yourself you're going to do an experiment right you're going to do an experiment so you're just going to see what happens if you operate in this new way and then you'll start to see it coming back at you right in these weird little surprising ways you go oh you know i put that energy out into the universe and now i see it coming back at me from this surprising place so all it takes is just getting a little bit of confirmation and then you will really really get into this and our strengths is the king of pentacles this is being able to manifest whatever you want and being so 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 comfortable in your human life and in your physical environment which is amazing for a star seed right to feel like the king of pentacles as a star seed that feeling feeling so rooted so grounded and so actually in love with your human life you know we never have that we you know most of us had never had that before but this is what we're starting to come into um and part of this is that if you're tuning into this video i mean most of you i think are probably the only star seeds that you know in in real life <laughs> and there's a reason for that right um you know star seeds are spread out all across the globe and in every walk of life and of course you know a we're kind of waking up in waves, right? Because, you know, one person will wake up in one area or in one kind of sphere of influence, you know, one kind of way of life, one kind of culture or subculture, and then they can help everyone else around them wake up. And then those people, you know, it ripples out, help them around them wake up. So if it you ever feel like, oh, I'm so frustrated, you know, um, why am I the only star seed? I know I really would wish I could talk to somebody about my experiences and it's so hard being so isolated. It's because you are, that's actually your role. You know, you volunteered for that. You realized that, okay, that you could do it. You could handle it. You could take on this job. You could hold, you could wake up by yourself in isolation and then you could hold that frequency for everybody around you. You guys absolutely in your life know other people who are starseeds. They're just not awake yet. And I know what that's like. And I know how uh, just... It can just get exhausting you know it's like why why can't the people around me you know why can't my soul family i know they're my soul family i know they're my star seed you know they're not just my friend why can't they wake up so i can talk to them about this stuff especially when you see them suffering like if you see them having third eye headaches and like ascension symptoms and maybe they're having crazy dreams and they're not connecting the dots and all putting it all together and you're looking at the, them going why aren't you realizing why aren't you remembering right and it can be frustrating and there's nothing we can do really you can't just tell them you're an alien you know that was your your star family coming to visit you and you were abducted last night and you know you're receiving upgrades through your third eye you can't tell anybody that because they won't they won't receive it right they're not they're not choosing to be receptive to that and 
it's just part of our role at the moment to be holding this to give everybody else kind of the chance to wait for their moment, right? It's not really a time a time thing. It doesn't matter that they're going to wake up a few years from now or a few decades from now or even a few lifetimes from now. It doesn't doesn't make any difference. They don't need to be waking up now. They're not late. They're not missing the boat. None of it. They're going to wake up exactly when they have to. Um, and in the meantime, we get to be the king of pentacles, really grounding this, you know, idea of being a starseed, this energy, you know, we're downloading uh, more codes because we're awake and because we're more receptive to it. And we're grounding it into our physical reality for those of us around us to receive it. Um, but finally, we're going to be getting more comfortable with this idea, even getting comfortable with the idea that we are star seeds. you know, depending on how long it's been since you had your awakening, you might still kind of be in shock or doubting yourself sometimes and just trying to figure out like, what the fuck <laughs> is going on. But now it, you get to be a little more comfortable about it. And you're going to start to see the kind the benefits, right? You have been walking your path, you have been doing your inner work, you have been communicating with your guides, you've been stepping into your mission. And that's going to start to reflect with more ease and flow in your life and you will feel like the King of Pentacles. So, so good. <laughs> so, so good. I, I like I really love um, when star seeds come through with earth energy, because that is actually doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be constantly floating up in the ether. We need to be getting connected with Earth, right? With Gaia and exchanging codes with her and getting grounded. Otherwise, we're not doing what we came here to do. We didn't come here to just be on Earth and then want to leave, right? We came here to master the human experience so that we can more effectively hold frequencies and share frequencies with others. And we need to do that by getting in touch with Earth energy. And um, I'm filming this during Virgo season. So, I mean, I know most of you are going to watch this months and months and even years after I post it. So th this message is still for you no matter when you're watching this. But anybody watching this during when I'm posting it in Virgo season or in any other Earth sign season, so Cancer season or Taurus season, it's even, I think, extra resonant because you can really tap into that Earth energy and get get so, so grounded. Okay, next coming over here. Um, interestingly, as you can see, this whole spread is bookended by the Emperor and the Empress. The Emperor and the Empress. But the Emperor card is over here in your limitations and karma. And this is one, this card is actually one of the biggest reasons why I feel you're learning to let go of the struggle. It is kind of like the last vestiges of I mean, patriarchal conditioning, if you want to think of it that way. Um, this isn't to say that we want to let go of all of our healthy masculine qualities or masculine energy at all. Um, ultimately, you know, we're going to be coming into <laughs> perfect balance, right? Perfect balance of our masculine and feminine energies, which is precisely where we want it to be. But for this card to come up in our limitations and karma, there is a kind of... Uh, pruning that needs to take place of our masculine energies, which ones were overemphasized and what aspects of, you know, yin energy, the white half of the yin yang, which aspects of that like collection of energies have been holding us back. And I think a lot of this is just unnecessary structures and especially structures, I think for you guys, structures that you think are there to serve you, <laughs> you know, for your highest good, you might think, okay, you know, I need to work out five days a week, you know, from 7am to 8am, something like that, or following a strict diet, um, any, any kind of diet, whatever it is, um, or even going, okay, I'm working on this creative project and I need to be, you know, releasing one piece of art or one song every week, just putting structures on your spirituality, even going, I need to meditate a certain amount of day. I need to listen to my guides, I need to try and communicate with them, I need to do Reiki, I need to do yoga, blah, 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 blah. So structures even surrounding your spirituality and your creative projects and even your friends and your family, um, I think those need to be pruned, really need to be going, okay, does that serve me, you know? And maybe it serves you, just for an example, maybe it serves you to be vegan six days a week, <laughs> when on the seventh day of the week, you go, okay, like, now I feel like this is an unnecessary structure I created for myself. And you know, then you go eat 
a pizza with pepperoni on it, something like that, right? Just always, always really looking at it going, okay, am I doing what I'm doing because it is truly fully resonant, truly coming from my heart space, truly from that state of flow, or am I doing or not doing whatever it is because of some structure I have imposed upon myself? For this emperor to come up in limitations and karma, there is definitely structure that needs to be pruned back. So, yeah, and I think for you guys, like, you guys aren't very socially conditioned. Um, but of course, we all have some vestiges of social conditioning, and we all put conditions and structures upon ourselves. So just always only listening to your very, very inner guidance and every day deciding what structures are relevant for you and what ones are not. And yeah, your shadow is the Ace of Swords. So I actually think you have recently been doing a lot of shadow work and it has been cleared away. This is the Ace of Swords, the sort of truth, right? The sort of clarity and new ideas and a new vision and a completely new fresh start. You can think about using this sword to slice the cords of whatever is holding you back and whatever structure is no longer serving you. So completely clearing away whatever is making you feel like you're choking. Um, I just saw somebody with like a rope around their neck. Um, so whatever is making you feel like you are suppressing yourself or feeling like it's suffocating you, whatever is suffocating you, um, different for everybody. It can be any, anything, any variety of thing, seriously. Um, if it's making you feel like you're choking or you're suffocating or you're drowning or that you're being squeezed and suppressed, like crunched, um, that's what this is about. I think you guys have already been clearing that out, like maybe 90%, you know, it depends for everybody, right? A large chunk of this has already been cleared out recently because you guys are doing it. This message is just coming through to say like, don't, don't give up now. Keep following through, like resolve this process, keep working on that. And it's, there's just one, like a few one last pocket of energy that has to that has to go, you know, <laughs> like the weird, really weird angel that my husband saw in the dream, um, you know, is telling us, you know, you need to chill out. You just need to you need to chill out, understanding that even the things you thought were most relevant for your personal journey or for your spirituality or for your creativity. Some of that isn't some of that needs to go. And, you know, this you already know this because look at this Queen of Cups. This is your ambitions, okay? So you got the Knight of Cups as your inner self, your current kind of situation in the world, and you want to actually level up from that because the Knight of Cups can be kind of like Sir Lancelot, right? Lancelot is the Knight of Cups, a little um, overcome by your feelings, a little like too emotional sometimes, um, feeling like, you're trying to balance your cup when you're riding a horse and it's full of wine and you're spilling it, right? The Knight of Cups can be a little uh, a little bit unstable, but the Queen of Cups, and this is where you want to get to, and this is, is where you're going to go because I mean, your greatest potential is the Empress. So look at that. You're really leveling up through a feminine, like a feminine paradigm really quickly, going from the Knight of Cups to the Queen of Cups to the Empress. So right now you're in Knight of Cups energy. You are aiming for becoming the Queen of Cups, being the the master of your emotions. If the Knight of Cups is sometimes mastered by their emotions, the Queen of Cups is has complete mastery over her emotions. And she is such a healing energy, such an intuitive energy, like so psychic, so empathic, so um, aware of how we are all completely interconnected, almost feeling like, you know, when you're if you're standing still and somebody walks past you, you can't always feel that depending on, you know, how much clothes you're wearing and, you know, what the, how the air in the room is like. But if someone passes right by you, you can you can feel that, right? But if they're passing like 10 feet away, you, you might not notice them. But if you're in the water, if you're swimming, you can all like the water is constantly swirling around you and it is so much more like tangible, like noticeable than air. You know, if someone swims by you, you feel that. You always feel that. You can feel the swoosh, right? And if a boat goes by and you're swimming in a lake, you can feel those waves from like so far away, from all the way across the lake, those, those waves will ripple out, out all the way to you. So the Queen of Cups is like that. She can sense 
how everything is rippling out, how everything is so connected. And it's like really expanding your psychic perception, um, just all of your intuition, all of that. <laughs> and that is where you want to go. And you will be going there, like I said, because of the Empress. But before I talk finally about the Empress, your emotions and love is the Two of Wands. This is really, I always think of the two of wands as putting two and two together. You have recently gone through this portal, gone through this archway. She is holding the world in her hand. So much new potential. And I think because, because of this ace of swords over here, because you have been letting go of those structures and restraints, coming into a place of being able to, um, like the phrase that just came to mind was like manifest by addition. <laughs> Is, that doesn't that doesn't really make sense, but it, I don't know if you can kind of feel into that phrase. Maybe you, somebody knows what I mean. But it's like really starting to understand how when you take two things and you put them together, you can get more than the sum of their parts. It's like one plus one doesn't just equal two. Like that's how math works, right? But think about when you're baking, right? If you take flour and sugar on their own well sugar tastes okay flour tastes terrible but if you mix them together with some water and bake it well now you got a cake right so understanding that when you mix things together when you take you take them and alchemize them then you can really get something new and something that it was greater and better than their parts were separately for some of you this is that is in the emotions and love for some of you that definitely is a um uh, romantic thing you know you'll know if that's relevant for you but that doesn't it's not going to be for everybody some people it could be a friend coming in where you know you team up a creative project like you know when two musicians are jamming and really hit it off and it's like aha we're a band we're going to be a band it's so exciting right and for others of you that is getting in touch with other aspects of yourself this could be literally like talking to yourself from another timeline um feeling your higher self, like different aspects of your higher self really come in or just connecting with your soul family or your guides, um, your galactic guides in your dream time or in meditation. And, you know, we have the six of wands with this duality thing going on next to the two of wands. So there was so much coming together of different streams. I feel like before, if you had felt like you had too many timelines spread out in before you and you couldn't figure out where to go, now you're starting to like pair them up and reduce them so that you feel sure, like more sure of your path. If you have been in a period of uncertainty, feeling like the quantum gates were just open and you had no idea how to proceed or where to go, all of your work has been bringing everything together and you're going to start to see that the path before you is more obvious, and more clear. And that that is a direct result of you becoming more aware of who you are you're gathering your soul fragments you're putting yourself together you're becoming much much more aware of who you are and once you know who you are you know where you need to go right once you know who you are you know where you want to go even more to the point so and you're becoming the empress remember this is that whole path of leveling up from the Knight of Cups to the Queen of Cups, and after that, becoming the Empress. You know, I see the Emperors and the Empress as the culmination of all of the suits. You know, the Empress holds the energy of the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Swords, the Queen of Wands, and the Queen of Pentacles. All of it. She has mastered all of the different realms. Here she is. You know, there's we see three of her here, and I can imagine there's a fourth one behind her that we just can't see, right? All aspects of herself have all been braided together to create such a strong rope. And when you become the Empress, it's like a, a leveling up of the amount of light you're holding into the earth, right? We were just talking about with this King of Pentacles, you are grounding cosmic energy, and you can think about it like almost like an internet connection, right? If like a, if a regular kind of unawakened human um, is connected to source via like dial up internet, right? Just imagine it's like the nineties when they're trying to connect to divine energies, they're like dialing up like it's 1995 and you're trying to connect to the internet. And if you think maybe like an ascended master who is alive on earth right now, literally just to anchor frequencies and hold the light, they are like, 
I don't know, the best internet connection you can possibly imagine or better than that, right? They're like a whole bundle of fiber lines just beaming this massive, massive influx of light onto the earth, holding that literally to keep us all alive and all together and all connected to source, right? Maybe, you know, star seeds, something like an empress energy where we are holding, um, you know, it's like high speed internet, right? It's like a good, solid high speed internet. We're definitely like more connected to our higher selves and to source and to all the cosmic energies than, you know, some random unawakened human, you know, but we're not like ascended master level, right? We're kind of in the middle, but we are, you guys right now are going through that process of, first of all, like cellular upgrades that you guys have been getting uh, in your sleep and just ambiently because you know the Arcturians and the Palladians and the Syrians and just everybody they're beaming us energy all the time and in 2020 if you're watching this now you're going through massive upgrades so literally your body your physical body is being transformed to be able to hold more light right now and all of the inner work that you were doing you were just literally getting more connected to source more connected to your higher selves more connected to your star family um and like literally upgrading your internet connection to source, if we want to use that analogy, you know, leveling up from the Knight of Cups to the Queen of Cups to the Empress. So you're just, your your beam of light, your vertical column of power. I always imagine myself as being connected, you know, through right down from the center of the earth, all the way up through all of my chakras and then all the way up to source and beyond. <laughs> Um, that vertical column of power that connects you connects you from source through your head to your heart to your toes to the center of the earth that is like expanding and upgrading and with that becomes comes just all of the potential to know yourself as source realizing that you are literally a piece of source that has just been flung really far out here and the more you can get reconnected the more you can kind of get more broadband internet connection the more light you can hold the more you will you will, the more you will remember yourself as a source energy being as an emanation of source consciousness and you just level up from here you don't go back from this not unless you chose to for some reason but i don't think any of us will choose to until we decide to do the ascension project on some other planet yet again because we've done this before and we'll probably do it again but we don't have to do it again this could be your last ascension project if you want it to be so for now, for as long as you remain on Earth, your bandwidth of light just keeps increasing. <laughs> it's literally onwards and upwards from here. And that whole thing about it's time to chill out, time to take a chill pill, time to take it easy, that is because the more you know yourself as source and the more connected to source you are, the more you realize that all of the trials and tribulations and difficulties that have been that you've ever experienced on earth and that you see other people experiencing you know that none of that is as important as it seems and that you do not have to struggle and suffer anymore because you can simply receive your mission from source and it will just perfectly flow and you can just live in this excitement of every morning going you know where am i going to be led today how can i be of service today who am I going to connect with today? What can I create today? And everything can just be beautiful and exciting. And you, you won't necessarily know what's coming up before you, but you know it's going to be awesome. And even when the universe throws you a curveball, even when challenges crop up, you can still see the bigger picture and you can see how it's a challenge that you can dissolve, actually, or just a challenge if you have to untangle it in a more linear way, you do that. But you're not, you're never, never again are you derailed by a challenge or an obstacle. You You are just more and more getting adept at dissolving them, stepping around them, going above them, transcending them, all of it. It's just going to be so, <laughs> so much flow, so much flow, because you are stepping out of your addiction to struggle. And I think I would just like to pull two oracle cards from this chakra reading deck to finish off. Can you guys hear my dog freaking out? The problem is that he speaks English and he can tell when I am wrapping up doing something, like if I'm on the phone <laughs> or I used to have a Twitch channel, I used to stream like doing video game stuff and he would always freak out towards the end and now he's doing that when I'm recording videos. Just a sec, let me uh, try to settle him down. Okay, we are Chihuahua free. Hopefully for long enough to get this done. 
Whoop. Psychic development. What up? And divine wisdom. This is really cool. Um, okay, I better talk about this one first. So I had just, or I had been talking about how, you know, that Queen of Cups is your psychic development. <laughs> you think increasing of your psychic perception. Here you go. Like, look at this. This person holding the crystal ball. They have the world in the palm of their hands, just like this person over here, and you being able to see. Man, some of you can probably do remote viewing, like, easily. But with this, um, always remembering that your psychic perception is going to come through entirely in its own unique way. I know we all want to be really clairvoyant because we, I think that is the most validating, you know, you, you know that if you see something, you know, that feels really real, that feels really tangible, but never forget that if your data comes through, through your empathic abilities, through your claircognizance, through sensations in your hands or in your body, ringing in your ears, clairaudience, right? And even, or even just a weird, weird, vague knowing or gut feeling, all of that is, is equally valid. Don't fall into that trap of comparing yourself to really powerfully clairvoyant people or to mediums who can have like literal English language conversation with, you know, beings who aren't incarnated. That I think is such of a stumbling block because you manifest the type of psychic perception that is most relevant for you and your, you know, life purpose, your mission, whatever it is that you're doing. You know, like if you, if you came here to transmit cosmic codes through music, why would you be really claircognizant, right? You wouldn't. <laughs> claircognizance wouldn't, I mean, sorry, I, I didn't mean claircognizant, I mean clairvoyant, right? Why would being able to remote view, that doesn't really help you. So don't think that just because you are channeling cosmic energies through your music, that you're any less psychic or any less connected to source than somebody who does really specific remote viewing. Okay, that is just, that's definitely a message here. A lot of us uh, are really doubting our psychic abilities and our intuition because it doesn't come through in the way we want it to. You know, it's like when you want your guides to talk to you in English and you want them to like use a voice that you can hear with your ears and then you hear them coming through in signs and synchronicities or in songs that are stuck in your head or in just you hear yourself in your head and you go, wait, was that me or was that my guides, right? <laughs> that's, that's no less connected, that is no less significant. So just pay attention to the subtleties, right, of your unique, very entirely unique to you psychic perception and your psychic development will develop in its own way. And just with this card, this divine wisdom, this is actually like the penultimate card in the deck it is the very last one. This is your soul star chakra completely opening up and knowing that, you know, this book is inside of you. All of the knowledge in all of the universe is inside of you and you never need to be looking outside of yourself for it. And I know we always say that, but it's time for you guys to really experience that. And over the next couple of months, you probably will have an experience that teaches you that. And watch out because if you have been looking outside of yourself for too much validation or, I mean... It's one thing to kind of, you know, decide something that you received as, you know, in your own inner guidance and decide it. And then you start to see it reflected as confirmation. That's that's always cool and, and good because it, it is helping you gain confidence in your own intuition, right? If nothing was ever confirmed for you, how would you ever know to trust yourself? So confirmation is one thing. But if you are hesitating in coming to your own conclusions or trusting your own guidance, um, Sometimes some kind of lesson comes through that will kind of teach you to stop looking to others for for the first, like, piece of information. You know, you should trust yourself first and then just use external information as confirmation, right? If you are not trusting yourself and you're looking for others to tell you what to think, 
The universe has a way of teaching you not to do that. It could be maybe you've put really a lot of faith in some kind of teacher or mentor you have, and then they could tell, tell you something. It could be a channeled message even, and it could be your gut instinct will go, that's not right. You know, that's not right for me. I don't, I don't agree with that. That doesn't feel resonant. That doesn't feel like good advice, or I don't really think that is how the cosmos works. It could be anything, but you go, okay, well, what do I know? I need to trust in them. They know better, right? Then you'll find out that, oh shit, I really should have trusted my gut instinct. I really should have not believed what they said, right? And that experience can be very unpleasant. It could be somebody telling you like, you know, the banks are going to shut down. You need to take all of your money out of the bank and bury it in your backyard. <laughs> and then, you know, 10 years go by and I'll look at that. The banks never, never, never shut down and you could have kept your money in the bank and you could have gone, okay, I should have trusted my intuition on that. That's just like one, one random example, right? Um, just, just watch, watch out for that. And the other, so besides just gaining confidence to trust only in your own self here, this is also, this divine wisdom card, it goes back to what I was saying about knowing yourself as source energy beings, knowing yourself as literally a piece of source. Like, literally, literally, guys, you know, there is no other way for consciousness to be except to be a piece of source, right? So if you are conscious, you are a piece of source. That's it. And that is the same thing for every other person around you. And oh, so the final thing coming through here is, you know, we sit around and we go, why are these people, why do these people act the way they do? Well, if you can always come back to remembering that they are also pieces of source consciousness, right? The They are literally every bit of they are like as divine as you are. They are as cosmically connected as you are. And I mean, you know, I used those examples earlier about how kind of, you know, some people, some of us are less connected to source than others. And, and that's true. But if somebody is less connected to source, it's because they, as source, chose to be less connected. They chose to have the experience of being less connected. So, you know, it's, it's a muddy problem. And I think that's what you guys are going to be kind of chewing on, maybe in the backgrounds of your mind is, if everybody is an emanation of source consciousness and everybody is doing what they are doing as an emanation of source consciousness, what does that mean? What does that really mean? Like on a deep level, there's a lot, there's a lot to think about on there. And I don't think I'm supposed to go on a rant about that. I think I'm just supposed to go throw that out there. We are, if like, I, I never use the word God, because I have Christian hangups because I was raised by like, a, not my, I mean, my parents were Christian, right? But they didn't really teach anything. It was my grandparents who really indoctrinated me. And it was, it was not, not the greatest experience. So I have, I have a lot of hangups about the word God. And that's why I never, I always use the word source. And I know sometimes people use the word God and source and like interchangeably. But for me, the word God is entirely tangled up with, you know, modern Christianity and I, have, I, you know, I just have personal baggage with it. So that's why I don't use it. But in this one case, just to make my point, I'm going to use the word God, right? If literally everything that is, is a piece of God, how do we make sense of that when everybody is doing everything that they do as a piece of God? You can think about when you feel like judging people, or feel like criticizing people, or even just feeling confused about why people do that, know that they, on some level, since they are a piece of God, they have a very good reason for doing whatever it is that they're doing. And this whole program, this whole game, this whole thing, this whole existence, this whole reality is all panning out perfectly because everybody is a piece of God doing exactly what God desires. So something interesting. <laughs> to ponder and I think I might leave it at that so thank you beautiful source energy beings for walking your path for remembering who you are and for doing exactly what you are doing and it has been a pleasure to do this reading and connect with you guys you guys are my deepest soul family anybody who tunes into these starseed readings and it is a pleasure 
always to connect with you. So thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to practice being of service and for practice channeling and for practicing using my intuition. So just thank you, sending you guys so much love. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.